Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean. I'm joined by Eva. Uh, I would like to thank you for being all here today. We are going to be sharing an update on the Energy, Heat, and Water Workstream, which is a part of the Data Center Facility Sustainability Workstream. So before we get started, I just want to take a moment and thank all of the many individuals who have already donated their time and effort to this work stream. Uh, we've got a really great group of individuals uh, who have really brought a very diverse range of thoughts and ideas. Um, that being said, shameless plug number one, we would definitely uh, love to see more individuals <laughs> take part in this work stream. So, Data centers, like any other facility in the built environment, have a unquestionable connection between the energy and water required for operation and their associated carbon footprint. So the goal of this work stream is to really better understand the nexus of these aspects with a specific focus on data center facility cooling systems. In this work stream, we really believe that the better that data center designers and operators understand these relationships, the better decisions that we can all make and support the decrease in the facility's impact on both the local and global environment. The goal of this, white paper, the goal of this work stream is to create a white paper that really illustrates these concepts. Um, it's, this is a really broad topic, so again, this is an encouragement um, to have the most diverse range of, of thoughts and ideas of individuals that really understand the siting, design, planning, and operation of different data center cooling systems. So the first thing that we had to do is we had all these different ideas, all these different um, things, aspects, whatever you want to call them. So grouping them together was really the first important thing that we had to do. And at a high level, we considered kind of two main buckets, metrics and tools. So on the metric side, we're considering carbon, energy, and water metrics. These were kind of the three main dependent variables that we were looking at. And these are the main aspects that we expect everyone in the data center world to be tracking in, in some various format. Um, though I do want to note that this specific work stream is not focusing on the exact metrics to use. Um, I hope everyone got the chance to listen to Rob present on the metrics work stream yesterday. And if you haven't, I encourage you to go back and view the recording. So we're not really focused on CUE, WUE, or any of these various aspects. Um, we're more kind of concerned with them on a higher level. Uh, and the second category that we looked at was tools. So these are really the decisions that are made during the different phases of the data center's life cycle, which affect the metrics. So at this time, the tools that we're looking at are heat reuse, economization, the design aspects, operational strategies, and the geographical location. And one of the real main concepts that we're hoping to really understand and convey is that optimizing and changing one metric is almost always going to change another metric in either a positive or negative way. And I'm sure one of the key examples of this that everyone is really familiar with is the use of water to drive down power consumption. We've all seen the news articles of data centers, you know, are sucking the water dry. Well, they're doing that for a reason. It really helps decrease power demand. Um, though that being said, what we're trying to better understand and convey is that optimization really needs to be done in a holistic manner that optimizes all three of these metrics in a way that fits the specific situation. Uh, and I'm sure everyone's heard this many times, what works for one place does not work for another place. Um, so we're trying to get away from kind of the one-size-fits-all approaches. Something that optimizes th these three metrics for, say, New England may not be the, the best strategy for Arizona or London, uh, for example. Uh, and as we go through this and develop the white paper, we're really hoping to kind of separate and identify which of these tools really have to be done during siting and, and design, say, geographical location, most people are not going to pick up and move their data center. Uh, and then which ones, say, can be done reasonably throughout operations. Now, like any engineering problem, it's really important to understand the boundary conditions. 
So <laughs> we've broken this up into three main effects and aspects, upstream, on-site, and downstream effects. So when we talk about upstream, we're really focused mainly on the effects of power generation, uh, specifically water consumption carbon emissions. Um, there's definitely other things that we are looking at. Uh, we are looking into, say, the power to treat and convey water, and we don't want to discount these, but uh, we're unsure if we can consistently and accurately estimate some of these things. For on-site, we're really looking to these metrics directly related to the cooling system use. Many, many data centers also use water for human consumption and site irrigation, but we don't really want to dig into those too much because they're not really dependent on the design and operation of the cooling systems. Uh, and finally, for downstream effects, currently we're really looking at waste heat recovery. Um, because we have such a great diverse group of individuals, there's been a lot of interesting ideas that have been brought up. So things like community impact and political considerations. And we're definitely interested in discussing these, um, though we do need to keep in mind that we do have a schedule for the white paper. Um, so some of these things we do have to discuss, but parking lot for potentially future times. Just a little further note on the upstream effects. Um, we're definitely not going to claim that a quantification of upstream effects is by means anything new. Uh, I'm sure everyone is familiar with many metrics and concepts like source WUE and scope two carbon emissions. Um, so we're not trying to create anything new, um, but a lot of the initial calculations that we've done really indicate that a large percentage of the data center's contributions to water consumption specifically and also carbon happen upstream. Uh, so we think it's really important that when these analyses occur and people are doing them, that we're really getting that holistic view of on-site and off-site. Uh, I'm gonna hand off to Eva and she's gonna go over some examples. Thank you, Sean. So let's take a look at an example to illustrate that interplay considering data center cooling system designs for a one megawatt facility out in Arizona, okay? We're looking at our baseline, which is 1.3 PUE. Uh, our economized is 1.15. So this gives us a total energy consumption, or power consumption of 11.4 million kilowatts a year for data center A, and then 10.1 million kilowatts per year for data center B. When we're looking at water, the upstream water consumption, we used an EWIF of 7.7, .7, which gave us virtual water flows of 88 million for data center A and 78 million liters per year for data center B. Looking on on-site water consumption, zero for our baseline and 10 million liters a year for our data center B. So now, when we add up the total footprint, it is the same for both cases, so there is no change in water, right? With all that said, when we're looking at the total operational carbon, we're looking at 3,400 metric tons of CO2 equivalent a year for data center A and only 3,000 for data center B. In this example, there's therefore a net savings of 400 metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year when economization is used. So in order to define these relationships, in our work stream, we plan to create a chart that you see here that would kind of illustrate the interplay of energy, carbon, and water. And we want to illustrate all of the tools that we mentioned earlier with this chart and look at these schemes. So for example, if you're looking at using a tool such as evaporative cooling, you know that that's gonna impact energy, water, and carbon in a certain way, and it's worth exploring. So this chart we hope to include in our white paper and kind of disseminate within different areas. So as we move forward, we need to dive into the essential factors, uh, and further analysis is definitely needed. So first we wanna consider the impact of evaporative cooling on water metrics. Geography is also a big one, and it plays an important role. We must examine how geogra geographical locations affect our metrics uh, to be able to tailor our strategies, ultimately. And then we do want to collaborate with the metrics workstream, although we are not the ones that are leading um, the metrics here. 
So that would give us um, some type of actionable items towards the end and solutions. So numerous other factors still need exploration. On our monthly calls, we do talk about different things. Some of those things that have been mentioned and need further exploration include some community effects, political effects, west and east water rights, for example, anthropogenic and biogenic carbon, energy scarcity, uh, water stress, total cost of ownership. So all of these are still worth considering um, and exploring as we move forward with our white paper and, and our group. So the general purpose of this presentation here is to raise discussion about these issues. We want to invite you to be able to join this work stream. If you are an expert, you want to add your point of view. If you have something to add, we would love to have you join our calls. So here's our call to action. Like I said, a lot of work still needs to be done. And we are moving forward with the white paper. We would like you to get involved. If you do scan this QR code here, that will take you to our Data Center Facilities Sustainability page. At the end of this page, if you sc scroll to the bottom, you do have a calendar that has all of the calls for the subgroups for Data Center Facility Sustainability. Our call is, is held every third Wednesday of the month at 10 a.m. Pacific time, so you can just add it to your calendar, sign up for the weekly, for the reminders, and then we hope to see you there. November 15th is our next call. During this, these calls, we discuss all these issues and keep, continue working on the white paper. So our white paper plan here, our title is State of Affairs in Relating Data Center Energy Consumption, Water Consumption, and Heat Reuse. I know that's a lot. Um, so <laughs> we're looking at the um, interplay between carbon energy and water using different tools and approaches, employing hypothetical examples to provide a quick visual guidance. We understand that this data center world is quickly evolving. Things are changing. Things have changed since last year, if you've been here last year. So we understand revisions are going to be needed in the future but we do need to move forward with, with a white paper as things are right now. So we do foresee our uh, draft work by our first draft done in Q1 of 2024, and we do hope to finalize the paper and submit it to OCP by Q3 of 2024. So that would be our first draft, and then we'll see what happens after all of you join. So with that, I do want to thank you for your time. If you didn't get that QR code, I'll hang out for a little bit. Feel free to come up to me. I'll give you my card. I would love to have you join the work group. I'll be able to share my contact information and get you connected with this group or any of the other groups that you guys have uh, sat in on involving sustainability. Do we have any questions, comments? No? Perfect. Well, thank you for your time.